my son, be wise, and make my heart glad, that I may answer him who reproaches me. So Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 11, My son, be wise, and make my heart glad, that I may answer him who reproaches me. Solomon's son, Rehoboam, who became king after him, was not wise, as his father had been. He thought that his power was intrinsic to himself. He didn't realise it could be taken away so easily. For any ruler can only rule when he has the support of his people. The fall of communism after the Second World War in Eastern Germany came about because the soldiers refused to shoot people who were praying in the church in Leipzig. And where the wall was, the government said, shoot those who go to the wall to pull it down. But they'd had enough, and they refused to shoot. So when the soldiers had had enough, that regime fell. And at the present time, there are four countries in the world with very serious civil unrest because the government is out of favour with the people. Solomon's reign had been glorious for the nation, but his people had had enough, and they told Rehoboam so. But he was not wise to heed them, and so lost 90% of the kingdom. This proverb is a little bit unusual in the sense that it is personal. My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me. Here, the emphasis is the son to behave himself well, to bring glory to his father. The Lord Jesus always did those things that pleased the father. And so we have two occasions at his baptism and at his transfiguration, where the father says, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased and hear him. So Jesus succeeded in living a life of wisdom. But the wisdom of God is not the same as the wisdom of men, and we need to understand that. So we cannot be wise just from observing the world. We need to be wise by heeding the word of God and seeing things as God sees them. So God the Father was well pleased with the Lord Jesus Christ. But now we, who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and are saved, have been adopted as sons of God. And so this exhortation applies to believers in the Lord Jesus. As many as believed in him, to them gave he the right or the power to become sons of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but are born of God. That is, we don't become children of God just because our parents were children of God or believers. It's not natural descent. And it's not the will of the flesh. We can't will ourselves to be saved, although we do need to be willing to be saved. And it's not the will of man. No other man can come along and make us a believer in the Lord Jesus, even though it is by the testimony of men that we come to know of this salvation. It is only by God giving us his spirit that gives us the power to be saved, become the children of God. And so, as sons of God, we also are exhorted to be wise and to do those things that please the Father to walk by the Spirit and not fulfil the lusts of the flesh, to be filled with the Spirit, that the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, self-control, may flow out of us. Against these things there is no law. That is, these are the things that nobody can stop us experiencing when we walk by the Spirit. And God is delighted even as John said to his friend Gaius in his third epistle, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Those who have heard the message 
and have turned their lives around. So they're no longer sons of disobedience as those who are unbelievers, but they are sons of obedience and walking in the way that the Lord Jesus walked. For he is our model, he is our standard. The second part of the proverb says that I may answer him who reproaches me. We can't see God, even as you can't see the wind, but you can see what God does. When the wind brings destruction, when the wind moves the leaves, when it blows up the waves, whatever the wind does, yes, you see that. So we cannot see God. We cannot see the Lord Jesus now because he's in heaven. So there are many people in the world who say there is no God. And then they make accusations against those who believe in God, saying belief is just a crutch for the feeble-minded or accusing people of sin, even of treason, because they believe in the Lord Jesus, another king. Now the sad thing is that as children of God, we may still sin. And in history, people in the name of God have done some things that were not in the mind of God. And so they have been brought reproach to the name of God. As the scripture again says, that God's name is blasphemed because of the misbehavior of those who bear the name of God. And this makes the Lord sad because his children are not walking in his ways. I mean, it's the same as in a natural family. We talk about the black sheep of the family. And some families have people who bring reproach upon the name of the family because their behaviour is unacceptable in society. Consequently, Jesus exhorts us, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And so, at times, the church has been dominated by people who have their own agenda and do not have the mind of Christ. And in the community, we have people who even in New Testament times We're drawing people after themselves. We're not drawing people to Christ. These were called the false prophets, the false evangelists. And we need to be wary of such people that we're not taken in by them. And the only way is to test, everyone says, against the word of God. And we can only test it if we know what the word of God says and actually have the mind of Christ, which comes from understanding the word of God. Have this mind in you, which was in Christ Jesus. And that was a mind of humility. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant, and being found as a servant, humbled himself to death, the death of the cross. When we do that, then in due course, God will exalt. For the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. He who exalts himself shall be humbled. He who humbles himself shall be exalted. So we are to be wise and to walk humbly with our God, drawing near to him, and he will draw near to us, cleansing our hands that we might live lives that ultimately provide no reproach against our Heavenly Father. Remember the story of Job. The Lord said to Satan, Have you seen my servant Job? There is none like him in all the earth. And Satan accused him of protecting Job. Well, Job was protected because he gave no opportunity for the devil to attack him. But at Satan's instigation, to prove that Satan was wrong, God allowed Satan to attack his family his wealth, his health, and even his friends came against him. But still, Job maintained his integrity and his trust in God. And in the end, God vindicated him. Job became an answer to Satan's false accusations when Job refused to blame God. My son, be wise. Make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me.
Mei.